talking about T-Pins. T-Pain, see what I did there? T-Pins, no. Two pins! It's like two chains. It's a long day. All right, Cracktion! Hey everybody, it's Miss Cracker, and it's time for another tutorial from a Jew. That's a Jew-torial, everybody. <laughs> You've got questions, I've got answers. This tutorial series is not just about beauty and drag. It's about the life lessons that drag can teach you. Just a little wisdom from Rabbi Cracker. Last week, we talked about how to choose a wig. Now I'm gonna tell you what to do with the wig when you got one, baby. When you walk out of the house with your wig, you want it to look like a beautiful flowing mantle, not like Kelly Mantle. I'm still getting bacon. Because people will be bacon for you to comb that thing out. That's not kosher. Are you a basic wig bitch? Then here are the basic essentials you need to go from Miss Crumbs to Miss Cracker! She's a woman! Now I don't need to tell you I am not a professional wig maker or beautician. What you see here is what works for me and what may work for you. Have a better idea? Put it in the comment box, which like, you know, doesn't exist. To begin with, the first thing that you will need is a wig block. This is basically like a dress form, but for your goddamn head. A lot of people will use styrofoam, but those things come apart and they are about as big as my thumb. That's not gonna play. Now, obviously I'm telling a bit of a lie when I'm holding this thing up. This one is actually my size. And it makes a difference. You will not see Laganja and kimchi using the same wig block. One time a queen came over to my house, she, had li she literally had a Q-tip. And I was like, there's no way that this is gonna fit on your head, but <laughs> it did, girl. Some of y'all got a Q-tip head, and that's fine. Everybody is beautiful. Don't joke about that. I have a big fat head, and I'm proud. How's your head, fat? <laughs> now, if you're gonna have a wig block, you're gonna need something to hold it up. For me, the only choice is a Burmax wig stand. You can get any kind of stand anywhere for a very low price. This shit is a little expensive, but it's the only one that works. This allows your weeble to wobble, but not fall down. As you can see, it's plastic, but extremely thick and strong. That way you can go as hard as you want on your wig block without a safe word. My safe word is, not tonight, Golem. My safe word is, oi. <laughs> My safe word is Kefilta, because she's three different kinds of fish, damn it. Next up, pins and ribbon. When you're getting going on your wig, you want it to stay on the block. So let me show you real quick how we're gonna put it in place. All I'm doing is tracing the hairline with some nice floral pins. They go straight into the wig block, but this little ribbon protects them from tearing up the lace. If you have a nice Swiss lace, it's not gonna react well to having a thumbtack jammed into its face. Would you? All right, here's the wig. <laughs> it's on the block like Jenny. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, and she's ready for you to f around with her. Or is she? Before you stop everything, take these two t pins and use them to secure the wig in the back. Bam! Make sure that you stretch the wig a little bit. You want the wig cap to be stretched out very nicely over the wig block, and I'll tell you why. The dreaded yarmulke effect. You will have all kinds of boy hair showing. You do not know how important this step is. Take a lesson from Vixen. You do not want to be the side chick with sideburns. Next up, how are we gonna style this wigs? We gotta use some combs and brushes. Here are the usual suspects. We have a nice brush for getting the hair in order. Next up, we have horse hair. <laughs> <laughs> Famous Mrs. Ed, thank you, you're welcome. This is for all that backcombing and teasing we're about to do in the next episode. There's a lot of animals involved in this because next up we have a rat tail comb. This guy is gonna help you style and smooth things later on. And the, uh, I think this is called a dingle hopper. I have no idea what this is. Mm. You're gonna need these guys to do all of your styling and combing later on. And as far as hairspray goes, freeze it hairspray, which is the only hairspray with a firm hold and no dandruff, like my ideal man. No selfie is complete without duck lips, and no hairstyling session is complete without duck clips. These guys are gonna keep your hair out of the way while you're working. And now, 
I'm going to tell you the first verses of the Bible in Morse code. You don't know if I'm doing it or not. You don't know Morse code. And I don't know the Bible. <laughs> and last but not least, a hair dryer. It takes a minute for hairspray to dry unless you have this handy man at your side. This brings us to our weekly Jews and Don'ts. Jew wear nice big hair like Monet Exchange in her later runways. Don't wear little kitty wigs like Monet in her earlier episodes. Michelle Visage said it best, if you are a man, you want to try and look a little petite by adding some volume to your hair. For this week's do's and don'ts, I'm going to give you a little caveat. Drag has absolutely no rules. There is nothing that you have to do. Some people know how to work it. Look at Sasha and Angina. They are living proof that bald is beautiful. Uh, them and Alexis Michelle out of drag. Try a big wig and see if it does something for you. If you don't like it, you can just pull it off and let the petals fall. So we have everything that we need to make a beautiful, luxurious wig. All that we have left to do now is style it. We're not just gonna tease Peggy here. We're gonna online bully the bitch until she looks like a lady bunny fantasy. This is where we take this weave from $30 shake and go to $100,000. But if you wanna see that, you're gonna have to come back next week for the tutorial. You've got questions. I've got answers. Sad that class is over? It's okay. Next week, Shul will be back in session with a new tutorial. See you next time! So real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like dun dun dun! <laughs>